All right, now we are reading chapter 28 of the Bakemono Gitara manga. We're back now with new outfit, Senjo Gohara, uh, talking about how beloved she is to Kanbaru. With, you know, close the door. <laughs> Won't close it because the building construction sucks. Why don't you try it? Break it. It would help me a lot since you're paying the repair bill. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Um, so, let's talk about <laughs> the dualism of fan service and symbolic uh, meaning in, in Monogatari. Or let's not, because that's a huge topic. But Ropesnake had left a comment on, on the, the winter 2019 anime reviews video that, that mentioned specifically the Senjo Gahara changing scenes. And it's like, it's a really good example, and it's it's uh, kind of something that we see all over this series, this kind of duality, but man, let's just move past it for now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like such a complicated subject to really figure out like how that's working. Um, and it is something I want to think about more, because the way it works in the manga and the way it works in the anime, I think, has some, some interesting distinctions. Anyways... I see now. That girl never really forgot about me, huh? Hmm. Let's go to different clubs. And she ran to my track meets and acted just like my manager. Oh. The Valhalla combination. Jogahara has a side that just attracts people that way, it seems. She's only acting out of fixed character because she wanted to. Hmm. So it's like Araragi can kind of extrapolate from the power she knows, or that he knows, sorry, that Senjo Gahara has now, power she has, and then the sort of character that she must have appeared when running the track meet, when becoming the school's ace, etc., etc. And he can see how someone like Kanbaru, as far as he knows her, would become totally in love with someone like that. Also, the shot of... Senju Gahara hanging out with some lilies might have a bit of meaning too. Because her mother was in a cult, Senju Gahara did her best to keep up her perfect appearance from that time. Huh? So I'm bothering you, Aragi Kim. It's my fault for not being able to settle my personal relationships. With some sp unnatural, spiteful words. Sounds quite gruesome. Yeah, it sounds like you're settling a grudge, right? It sounds like you're taking care of business uh, and killing someone. <laughs> um, but no, I think she just knows that it wasn't right to leave Kanbaru with these sort of unresolved feelings, to just drive her away from her problems, from her bizarre weightlessness, this supernatural crisis that uh, clearly there would be something unresolved on her end. Maybe it's because a lot of people found out about a rubbing relationship I already can. began dating around five days ago and the stalking started around three days ago. Time wise, it sounds just about perfect. Nice! Look at this uh, awesome calendar. Yeah, this all adds up. Cool. Hey, what is today? The 23rd? Oh, well, whatever. That's it. She was curious about what kind of boyfriend Senjo Gahara Kitagi had and came to appraise him. Hmm. He's pretty close. But appraise is perhaps too soft. Senjo Gahara is too gruesome in his word in her words. I think he's being a little naive. Kragi Kenji did something Kanbro couldn't do. Yeah, that's that's like the long and short of it. That's what's driving these feelings. And here the lilies are black. The darkness of the love. Ha! Huh. Another thing that I think people really underrate about the Monogatari series is its investigations of love. And love not in many conventional forms, but again and again through very unconventional angles. We have stories that deep down are actually just love stories. And, and here, like, think of the tragedy of someone who harbors an, an unreciprocatable crush, 
who is in love with someone that they know will never love them back in that way. But the solace they take is in being closest to them. That there's nothing that other people can do for them that they can't do. That even though they'll never have a loving relationship, there's something special to them, that, that, that they're there for them in a way that no other person is. And then to have this scooped out from them, scooped kind of like, oh, just underneath them, some guy, some loser, who the hell is even this guy, comes in and solves the weirdest, biggest crisis of her life. That hurts. That must really, really hurt. And, and kind of extrapolating backwards from that evident pain that we see in Kanbaru to the feelings of, of love and appreciation and admiration uh, that, that must have been before that split. You know what I'm saying? It, it reveals a, a very tender and very beautiful love story, I think. Anyhow, that is enough of a reason for her. Maybe it started when, she, maybe when she started blindly placing me, it was actually from the bottom of her heart. Yeah, kind of, right? Or at least this is maybe her rationalization. That if someone was capable of doing that, of, of succeeding where she had failed when it comes to Sanjay Bahara, then that person must at least be extremely remarkable, must be a, a superhuman, must be one of the most amazing people ever to live. Otherwise, it's just too painful to even consider, too painful to bear that she had failed where someone else had succeeded. Maybe she could have succeeded, but she had failed regardless. The situation changed. The secret that brings you is gone. But don't think Kambru has any ill intent here. Me from back then was nothing but an act. Ah, see, this is painful too! When the person you admire so much is actually just kind of a facade for someone much more flawed, much more unsure. This is kind of like Bloom into You-esque, no? A little. I have no intention and no need to go back to that. It's the way of life I chose. Those words, Sanjay Bahara, ended this talk. And then, back to the fight. Back then, when Kambra was with Sanjay Bahara, how did they interact with each other? Oh man, the, the backgrounds are so great. Look at these little tag stickers. This is something you see quite a lot in Japan, is instead of full-on spray painting something, you just have custom-made stickers, either handmade with markers or mass-produced, and then you tag things by sticking them up. Um, you also see normal spray paint in 3D too, of course, but this is even more common. It's simpler, something similar to what I did to you. Sure, this just this went beyond just something similar to my situation. Oh my God, his jaw is not not in good shape. I'm sure she cut off the people she deeply respected. In fact, I'm guessing what was was so bad that what happened to me was like a tiny scratch. Probably yes. And look at this amazing shot of the stapler centipede. Senjogahara, a beast within herself, lashing out and cutting away all the people that were once closest to her, the people that she most wanted not to be involved with this unprecedented, incomprehensible problem of the weight loss. What an image. Good God. And this is something else, I think, that is so brilliant about this series is like we, we go through this crisis, we have the weight loss adventure, and there's references and stuff to how it destroyed her social life, how it changed everything in all of her relationships. And at the time, it's just kind of told to us, and we see glimpses of it that are kind of most relevant. Like, of course, the situation with the cult leader and stuff comes to the foreground there. But then... There's kind of like a whole world of trauma that we know we just sort of got a glimpse of. 
And it's only in later arcs that we return to this, and it feels like we're finally kind of seeing it fully for the first time. You know what I mean? This is something that comes up again and again, that there's like one arc to solve the problem, and then another arc to actually deal with the trauma. And, and it just feels so real, and it, it gives the characters such a depth that it's not just like, all right, took care of that, but, you know, the, the equivalent of years of therapy and such, but played out with, like, supernatural battles. <laughs> Notice I'm in the secret of my body. Sandra Gohara told me, in this school, only the healthcare teacher Harukami Sensei knew about my secret. Right. Right. She did, yes. This is back when she was giving him the staple. How did Kamru feel about that exactly? Hmm. Just don't know. Another amazing shot. The outdoor air conditioning units exploding. Now this is probably too many outdoor air conditioning units for one building of this size. So again, we're kind of straying here and there into this dreamlike Shaftian world of excesses and patterns and unrealistic spaces, but it's in a cool middle spot still. <sighs> nice nice faint, Aragi. Nice dodge. I don't know how long you can keep this up, though. She didn't even include her in the group. All of those memories and Cumberbatch's feelings were one-sidedly forgotten by force. Oh, man. This this shot of all this trash in the, the alley outside and Kanbaru looking down into what I think is Senjo Gahara's apartment, knowing that she's closed off of, from it, closed off forever. Amazing shot. Punching faster and faster. This is quite the fight scene. This is cool. This is like Murata-esque choreography. Well, let's not go, let's not go crazy. I'm sorry, Murata. <laughs> but it's good, it's still good. Say Murata ask though, you know, I'm I'm really I'm saying something crazy. Pack patterns only hooks and straight punches. Eyes can't see it all as expected. No matter how fast you are, you can't surpass the speed of sound. Huh? What's the plan here? Another huge punch. Maybe it's the high tier identity use and stick to wear those sorbo boots. Ah! Step on me during your finisher is now reverberating me, so we can hear the squeak of the rubber boots and thus anticipate every attack because she always has to kind of shift her weight to throw the punch. Person's punches are direct and they're only with one arm. I move my body to the timing of the sound and won't hit me. God, Bart. Nah, I mean, it's not really a surprise anymore. We, we, everyone knows, but it's still hype when he finally says the name of his attacker. If you are a combo, I have no reason to fight you. But. Oh, this showdown. Now I have no more reason to run either. If you're interjecting right now, that may not be the main problem. I have no intention or no need to go back to that, huh? This being Senjo Gohara's previous facade of a perfect girl that can do anything. Just thinking back to her words about it. Someone who she herself severed her relationship with. Maybe true that her calamity is over, she's not the type of person who would say something as selfish as refusing to repair their relationship. Hmm. So, yeah, this is kind of the situation, right? Aragi is like, well, now that you have restored your weight, you guys can just go back to being friends. There's nothing you need to keep her from. There's no kind of savior dynamic anymore. Whatever. But she's like, no, she was never really even friends with me. She was just friends with the person I was pretending to being back then. So why would I, the real me that I've chosen to live my life as now, go back to being friends with her? It's a good question, I guess. It's a pretty brutal question. It's kind of a sad state of affairs. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a good answer for it. 
And yet at the same time, he's right. It's not like she would go out of her way to say, I refuse to repair this relationship. It's just, she doesn't see the point. Ooh. And Araragi lands a punch. A decisive blow. Look at the little explosion on the back of Kanbury's body. That's a nice touch. Really shows the impact. You two are a little too tactless. That's why I won't interject in this. I'll unleash my fists. He's concluded. He can't get involved in the actual emotional conflict here. All he can do is win the physical conflict. Okay. All right. Fight scenes continue. And yet another shot of Shinobu, even though she's only shown up like once, I think, in the manga. Uh, everyone is sure excited to get to those arcs. All right. Good stuff. Let us eagerly await more chapters. We've had four in the last two days, so I, I'm expecting that we'll slow down at some point. But if not, oh, that's exciting too. Okay, bye-bye for now.